Hi everybody, my name is Max Gander. I work in product management for SAP Analytics Cloud for Planning. And today I want to show you a demo of the unified capabilities for BI predictive and planning in SAP Analytics Cloud that enable you to take control of your own company's destiny by simulating future business outcomes after assessing a situation. And finally, you can decide on a plan for your company's future. So in this demo, I'm going to be the CFO of the bike manufacturer Best One Bikes. And I'm starting my day looking into my inbox. And what I find there is a data alert that has sent to me by the system SAP Analytics Cloud. And what I see is that across our product line, overall customer satisfaction has decreased, in some cases quite significantly. Of course, I want to find out more about it as I'm very concerned about our customer sentiments. So what I can do next is open the analytics application. I'm starting on a dashboard that gives me details about the market development and customer sentiments. The first thing that I see is that in the last two years, between 2019 and 2020, the market has grown substantially, year over year, more than 20%. We assume this is because of the global pandemic, the boom of the e-bikes, etc. Also in the past years, we have a compound annual growth rate of more than 7%. The dashboard is also giving me details about other key figures of the market. For example, the average time to delivery, which has increased significantly year over year, as per the year-to-date actuals, and the demand satisfaction rate. And this is telling me that some customers ordered a bike and didn't even get it at all. Also, the system has generated predictive forecast for me, made by the predictive analytics capabilities that are built into the product out of the box. So we see that also in this year, we expect a high growth in the market. We want to take a look at the customer sentiments. We see that the overall customer satisfaction has decreased significantly over the past eight quarters. It started on a scale from one to five, at almost five, and it's gone down to below three. We can relate this to the delivery times that are increasing, as we have seen, and we can also relate it to the value for money. As costs of goods sold explode with the higher demand, we also need to increase the prices of our bicycles. And all those factors are becoming relevant for the overall satisfaction. So we believe those are challenges that we should really tackle going forward. Also on this page, we have further unstructured information. For example, we have an RSS feed, which confirms to us that the market momentum is continuing and we have comments that have been left by our colleagues. So now we can take a look at our own company situation in more detail. We switch to the company overview and first thing we see is like the total market, we're growing as well. We're doing great in terms of top line. Total revenue up year over year. And also the forecast is indicating that we will outperform on our budget in all products, in all regions. The next thing, and that's a major challenge, is that our margins are not keeping up with the performance of our bottom line. Operating margin is down year over year. Cross margin is down by even 10 percentage points compared year over year as per our last forecast. We see that cost of goods sold are driving that. The ratio is increasing year over year, and also this has a significant impact on our operating margin. So now let's look at our internal workforce and the external workforce. We are above budget here, but this is okay for us. We need to keep everybody on board, bring in additional people in order to keep the capacities in the production lines up. In accordance with that, we also are above budget when it comes to personal expenses. Furthermore, we have brought in external workforce for further catering the large demand that we are seeing in the market. We have an attrition rate of 8%, which is higher than budgeted. And of course, this is not helping us and we need to overcome the situation when we, when we do our planning for the next year's budget. In the next step, we want to get planning and we can either enter directly a strategic scenario simulation, which is what we will take a look at, at next, but also we have the choice to go at the planning overview page that gives us a very nice overview above all the different planning steps that are involved. And this is what I want to show you next. So here we have a very nice overview. Power users have access to the maintenance of global parameters. We have all the different planning scenarios listed and we can jump into the reports that we have just seen. We are now going into the strategic scenario simulation. So in the center of the screen, we see a value driver tree, which is a super visual way to simulate um, certain scenarios for our company. Furthermore, at the top of the screen, we have different charts representing our core KPIs. And we also have reference lines in there that indicate the targets that we want to achieve. 
colleagues from controlling have already prepared a simulation baseline for us, so a version of the data that we can use as a basis for further simulation. We want to keep that unchanged and create own scenarios. That's the cool thing about SAP Analytics Cloud and Analytics applications. So you can really guide your user through planning workflows that can be more complex, but it's very a simple and easy to use intuitive experience. So we've created a copy based on the simulation baseline, called it My Scenario 1, and now we can start playing with the different parameters. For example, colleagues in controlling expect 10% growth in the years 2022, 2023. We say we can outperform this even, so we increase to 11%. And you see, as we do so on the fly, all the different charts, etc., are updating in real time. So what we've done is great to our top line, but of course we have to increase cost of goods sold accordingly. And we're not only doing that proportionally, but we're even adding further cost of goods sold because we believe that we must localize our supply chain to face those um, long delivery times. Of course, this is coming at a higher price, but we accept that. Okay, now we want to do something about our internal workforce and we want to fight attrition. So we are increasing the incentives to our employees. Say we're going up to 110K per employee. And again, everything is updating in real time. We see that we are now missing our operating margin objective for 2023. We are missing our cross margin objective, but we have reached our revenue objective. So what else can we do about the operating margin? So we believe that we may not need all the marketing expenses that are currently inside this planning version. So we are, we are cutting down on that because we believe that the demand is anyway so high, we don't need to invest a lot into demand generation going forward. So we do that. And of course, as always, we directly see the impact on our operating margin. We see we don't meet the objectives 100%. So what we could do now is create additional scenarios with higher growth rates, for example. We could create additional scenarios with less employee incentives, etc. Once we are done with our simulation and we have a version that we want to decide for, we can confirm the data. That means publishing it and handing it over to controlling and everybody involved in making this now a top-down budgeting exercise. And the data will flow into the budgeting process. It will flow into cost of goods sold planning, into HR planning, and all the different kinds of planning processes that we have to deal with within our company, cross LOB for us. This is now really the true power of extended planning and analysis. So to summarize, what we've seen today is how the unified capabilities for BI, predictive analytics, and planning and simulation can help you assess the situation of your own company, take control of it by simulating different future outcomes, and you can operationalize a plan. And with that, data will flow through all the different sub-processes, sales and cost, cost of goods sold planning, for example, HR planning, and that is what we consider to be true extended planning and analysis. Thanks for watching.